Very true. Okay. Well, I'll happily start, and then if more people join, I'll restart. Um, but I do have a pattern um, that I can share in the chat, and I'll reshare it uh, again. I don't know if chat... Does chat stay if someone joins in the middle of it, or is it, like, new as soon as they join? It's new. Perfect. Um, so I was asked to share something over, um, yes, the link to the pattern. Um, so I was asked to kind of share a little bit about me and what I'm doing. Um, so I am going to be knitting some candy corns. I actually started doing this because uh, one of my friends is vegan and she said one of the things that she misses um, when it comes to Halloween candies is candy corn because they are not vegan due to some of the ingredients. And so I made a joke that I can make her some candy corn, so I knit her some um, to share with her a couple years ago. And I've just been doing the pattern ever since. I really enjoy it. Um, but I am one of the librarians here. Uh, I focus on the life sciences, so I help. Uh, we have a college of ag and life sciences here that runs the gamut of poultry all the way to toxicology. Um, and a lot of my experiences is in the life sciences, which is pretty fun, and the health sciences. Um, I started knitting technically about 10 years ago. I started when I first started college because I thought it would be fun to knit scarves. And then I didn't touch it again until 2017. Um, I joke with a lot of people that I'm, I'm a very cliche librarian uh, because I do all the like fiber crafts, so like knitting and crocheting and cross stitch. Um, yeah, I really enjoy knitting scarves. Um, my first one is quite comical because it kind of just looks like this all the way up. I think I still have it, which is great because it kind of just shows me how far I have come. Um, I put down knitting uh, originally because I didn't understand how to purl. Um, no one in my family knit and I didn't have any friends that knit. And I got really frustrated because I couldn't figure out what purling was. Um, and then at my first uh, professional librarian job, my supervisor knit. And so she's like, well, I can show you how to purl. And so we spent actually one of our one-on-one um, -on -one meetings knitting, which was great. Um, and she showed me how to purl. And then she shared a, um, she shared some wisdom and also a book was once you learn how to knit and purl, you can pretty much do anything when it comes to knitting. It was great. Yeah, we spent several of our one-on-ones um, talking and chatting, which was really helpful, uh, but also knitting. Um, I'm someone who has anxiety socially and just clinically and anxiety gives me something else, and knitting gives me something else to focus on instead of being anxious, so I really like it, um, which has come in handy during the pandemic, as uh, we all might imagine. Um, so with this pattern, it is hacked from a Mochi Mochi Land pattern. Um, oh yeah, Zoom meetings are the best time to knit, and people don't seem to mind, which I appreciate as well. Um, hi to the new viewers, just talking a little bit about me knitting and my history with it, um, but today we're going to be knitting some candy corns. Um, I think our moderator, hi, uh, will be sharing our pattern. Um, it's a hacked pattern. Uh, the original one is from Mochi Mochi Land. Um, she knits on US1 double pointed needles, which basically means they're very, very tiny and like the size of um, pencil lead it feels like sometimes, and she knits them in the round which means she uses three different needles to knit tiny, tiny candy corns. Um, but my hacked pattern, I think, is more approachable because it's not on US ones, which are super, super tiny, um, that they are on. Um, actually, I don't know the size of my, of my double point needles. They look like a US three. They're about the size of a pencil normally, um, but DPNs or double pointed needles are typically used when you want to knit circles. Um, I don't use these to knit circles. I use them to knit flat. Um, they're the only ones that really looked good for the size of object. Um, but, so what we're gonna do, and some of the tools that you'll need, is um, needles uh, in the pattern that's linked. Oh yeah, no, knitting small things in the round is terrifying. Um, I am not the most like nimbly person when it comes to super tiny fiddly things. Um, so when I learned how to um, knit this flat, or make, or what that means is like knit from the top to the um, bottom, uh, it was a lot easier than having to try to do it with only 14 stitches on three different needles. Um, 
I, I enjoy knitting, but I'm not that patient sometimes. Um, but the tools for today are going to be two um, knitting needles. It doesn't matter if they're DPNs or not. Basically, US 1 to US 4, uh, that basically means how um, wide they are or what their diameter is in millimeters. Um, I think a US 4 is like 2.5 millimeters and then it goes even smaller. And then some scissors to cut your yarn. I have these tiny travel scissors um, for a lot of library conferences. I travel with my knitting and so these are really fun and they keep small and they're not that hard to keep track of which is really great. And then you're going to need a tapestry needle. Uh, mine's on a magnet. But basically what this is, if you can see it, is it is a dull pointed needle that doesn't have a point on it and it's a lot larger through the um, eyelet. And so this is so that way, um, so we can weave in our ends when we get to this. Oh, and then I um, have crochet hooks. And so I use these when it comes to binding off knitting. Um, yes, they're some of my favorites. I keep seeing other ones. Um, I also very much love st uh, stationery. And jet pins have these really cute, like super tiny um, jetpins.com. They're a stationery store they have really cute tiny ones um, that I'm trying to stop myself to, to not buy um, but when I when I bind off with knitting um, I find it easier to do it with crochet hooks um, you don't have to do that if you're following along um, it's just for me a lot easier so I don't lose my stitches which we'll talk about in a little bit um, but I am actually streaming from the library uh, largely because my internet is not capable enough to handle this uh, which is totally fine but I brought a couple things with me that can kind of talk um, some things that once we are back in person that I want to try and use the makerspace for. And so these are just pieces of wood that someone has used to laser cut. Um, and so this one is just the directions on how to make left, m m make right. Oh, so the two points. So double pointed needles are mainly so that as you knit, I only brought two, is so that way if you're knitting in a circle, you don't have to try to slide them down to, the, um, to either side. That way you can just keep going in a circle and so they don't have to worry about this the stopper on the end so if you only had one you could knit but then it would get stuck on the other end as you switch to the third or fourth needle um, so essentially you'd have like one here and then you'd use a fourth needle to knit which is also why i don't like knitting circles um, on double pointed needles which is terrifying um but these are just two things that um some other crafters have made that are just laser cut into some wood. Uh, we have one of these machines at the ma maker space that they've designed. Um, and this just has directions on how to make a stitch left or right. Um, and then some people use them to make stitch markers. And these are things that, that, that you would use <clears throat> for when you're knitting something and you need to like know where a stitch has changed. Um, but they're just some like really cute uses and ways that um, one of our wood uh, wood laser cutters can be used. Um, I've seen people here at the libraries use it to make n name tags, which are really cool, um, as well as like business cards and stuff like that. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and start knitting. Move our little candy corns out of the way. So we're going to start with yellow. Um, I just have this really cheap acrylic from like you can get it at Joann's or Michael's or um, Walmart really anywhere that has a pretty cheap craft. Um, in the hacked pattern it says fingering weight. Um, I'll admit I've been knitting off and on for about five years and I still don't understand the different weights of needle of, of yarn but basically it's some yarn is thicker than others and they have different ways to talk about it. They have like lace which is super super tiny. Um, they have sport which is a little bit thicker and they use it to make scarves and stuff. Um, but basically, it's the sa it's around the same um, diameter as like a, a cell phone charger. So it's about this size. If you go to Joann's, they sometimes have like charts of what different thickness is. Um, and you don't actually need a lot. So if you um, have a little bit of yarn, or if you find like a tiny skein, which is what people call a group of yarn, you can use that. Um, but yeah, I just have three or yeah, three of my colors here to make candy corns. You can really stripe it any way you want. Um, I've seen candy corn that's um, like orange and purple sometimes, so I mean you can really do whatever you want. Um, but our first step is we're going to cast on 14 stitches. 
And so before we start, we have to make a slip knot. Um, so the best way that I can show that is we're going to take it, do the mat, the weights have to match. They can, I think it would be easier um, as you knit, uh, because if your weight is too different, the size of the needle is going to make it fit, um, it's going to make it stretch a little bit weird. Um, but it, I think as long as you don't go larger and you use a smaller weight, that would be okay. But that is going to change the size of each um, row that we have. If it's a thinner weight, it's going to change. Uh, but if it's a thicker weight, it'll also look a little larger. Um, so if they can be the same weight or thickness, um, that would be helpful. Um, so to make a slip knot, what I do is I make a loop with my fingers and then you have a little tail as well as the, t the yarn coming from the ball. And so I make a loop, doesn't matter if the tail is on top or on bottom, either one will work. And then I just use my fingers to grab the tail and then you pull it through and you tighten it so that way your knot gets smaller. And so it does is, is larger than what we need, but that's okay because when we get our knitting needle, we will slide the loop on our needle and then you can use it to kind of just adjust. So you'll pull that tail to attach it to your needle. Okay, and so for this, you can use any cast on method. So that's how you get your stitches onto your, um, your needle. I'm going to use long tail and I think I'm going to have to redo my cast or my um, slip knot for that reason. Um, but a long tail cast on is usually you take a lot of yarn to make a long tail and then you use that extra tail to add on your stitches. So we're going to make our slip knot again, pull that through, and we're just going to tighten up this here, slip it on our needle and just tighten it the same way we did previously and so for the long tail cast on uh, people call it a slingshot but you take your pointer finger and your thumb and make a Y and then bring it down so it looks similar to this and so what we're gonna do is we have our Y and so we're going to pick up this yarn here with our needles so we're just going to go down and up and then we're going to turn our hand so we can pick up this one but while we pick that up we're gonna go back through our thumb and then we can let go so that makes two stitches now so I'm gonna do it again so we make our Y we pick up this yarn here Let's go to this yarn and then back through that loop that we made. So that makes three. And then we're going to do it again. Yeah, I'm a very visual person when it comes to knitting things. I've tried to watch all sorts of YouTube videos, um, as well as there used to be a Tumblr that had knitting GIFs, which, or GIFs, however you wanna say it, um, that were really helpful, but usually when people do this, I think that they, um, I think for me they miss a lot of, like when it gets to here and things seem to all be the same look and they don't really have the different depths, um, people who are willfully turn their hand so I can see what it looks like either this way, which is how um, I would look at it, or this way so I'm able to see the different heights of things. Um, seems to really help. So I'm just going to cast on 10 more. Um, I like the long tail cast on because it's really stretchy. And so if you're making things uh, like clothes or hats, um, it really helps. Yeah, diagrams and books are not helpful at all for me when it comes to knitting. Um, because largely I just don't understand what they're saying. Um, but like I said, I'm very visual. Um, there is a book when I started knitting, and I don't like the titles of these, but it's Knitting for Dummies. And the one thing that I like about th um, the the book that they have is there are there are um, videos associated with it. 
Um, so whether you have the actual physical book or you have a PD or, or like a, a um, ebook version, you can go and see all the videos, which I think is really helpful. I'm gonna count this real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so that'll be nine. Um, and you'll see that my tail is getting very short here. So that's what part of the long tail cast on is as you add more stitches, this tail will get shorter. So that was nine. 10, 11, and I might not have bargained for enough yarn. Let's see, that's 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, 10, 11. And that's okay if I didn't, because I can just start over. 12, because this is a smaller project. I've had um, some knitting projects that call you for you to cast on like, 50 or 60 and then you get to like 45 and this is how much you have left um, and then you just have to um, what they call in knitting as well as others they call it frogging because you have to rip it back so it sounds like ribbit but it's actually rip it um, but it's fun it took me a while to understand what people are talking about when they were talking about frogging um, <laughs> I'm, I appreciate that's visual ASMR um, 13. Okay, we might be able to swing this. We have just enough. Um, yeah, there, there's a meme in a lot of craft groups um, of like people learning how to knit um, on YouTube and things like that. And you're just um, yelling at the person doing the tutorial to slow down because usually they're just like, okay, we're going to cast on. And then all of a sudden you have like 45 <laughs> stitches cast on and you're like, I don't know what's happening and I don't want to rewind this. Um, but when you uh, do this I would suggest leaving more of a tail um, I am a little wary about this much of it um, but I'm just gonna hope for the best and see how it goes um, if you're casting off um, this is also something that people who knit or crochet called yarn chicken uh, very much like the, the game of playing chicken of who's gonna um, run out first um, I clearly won this game because I made the yarn before it ran out um, but if you have seen the pattern that's in the chat, um, I'll share that again. There we go. Um, so we have cast on 14 stitches. And so for the first three rows, we're just going to knit them back and forth. Um, so I'm going to pick up my other needle. Um, so I knit continental flicking kind of, there are different knitting styles. Um, Very Pink Knits on YouTube has some really good tutorials and just like demonstrations of different knitting styles. Um, there's one that I wish I could learn. Oh wait, I don't do Continental, apologies. Continental is one where the yarn stays in your left hand. Um, I don't know how to do it because I don't understand it, but the way people do it is they hold their yarn like this and somehow they just always pick up this way. I, I personally don't understand it. Um, I do it to where I, I think it's called picking. So you, I will literally take my hand off of my needle and then loop it. Um, but some people do flicking, which is where they're able, and I don't understand that one either. They're able to keep their right hand on the needle and just do this with their finger and do the yarn. Um, that is one that I don't think my fingers are quite as inept for. Um, but for knitting, where did our tail go? I might have to rip this out. Yeah, I'm gonna rip this out and start over because I don't think it's long enough for me to make my chain. So I'm gonna go a little bit deeper because we're gonna remake our slip knot, and I'm gonna go through and just do this really quickly. So this will be two, three, four, five. You'll hear me counting a lot to myself. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. It's a little loose. Fourteen. Um, so these are a little loose because I didn't pull them tight all the way, um, but that'll be okay. But now you can see I have a much longer tail, which will come in handy at the end of this. Um, so we're just gonna make sure we don't knit with this tail. I've done it before, but you'll run out and it'll uh, mess up your project. Um, but what we're gonna do for knitting is you're gonna go 
um, on this side of your project here you're going to go through this side of your loop to the front I just want to show you this way as well so you have this here of your yarn and so you're going to use the inside right here and just go through that to make an X through that first loop and so I'm just going to make sure I have my right yarn and so um, tension is really and how you hold the yarn depends um, it took me a really long time to, to learn how to do this. I, I was knitting a lot of washcloths just to learn my tension because those don't have to be perfect. They're just used to keep my house clean, so it's fine. Um, but what I do is I pick up the yarn with my pinky here. So I just pick it up, loop it, and then I hold it with my, um, with my pointer finger over it. So this just helps me have control over what I'm doing. Uh, but you can also just hold it in your hand kind of like a pencil um, it really is up to you um, but I just use my pointer finger to have a little bit of control with my tension and so we've put through our first stitch and so we're gonna take this yarn and we're just gonna wrap it around the make sure you can see that wrap it around this bottom here so you have done this and so you've made that X you can see it there and so this is when you're going to and I'm gonna show you at this angle just for right now. So you're going to slowly re-drive your needle back through that first loop. Make sure. And then you're just going to slide it off. Okay. So this is where it gets a little scary, at least when it comes to knitting. So we're, we're going to go back. I'm going to show you at this angle. So you're going to go through that loop again. Take your yarn and you're going to go under that bottom and over the top. And then you will slowly go back through the loop you just made. And then slide it over. I hadn't thought about. Yeah, tension for me is really hard. Um, I am working on learning crochet, and I say learning just because um, I think I figure it out, and then I just try to do a project and it doesn't work. Um, but that's where I have the most struggle with my tension because with with knitting you use two needles and so for me I have more control uh, but with crochet you just use a single hook like I showed you earlier um, and so you hold yarn with one hand and the hook in the other um, and that I feel like I, I go too tight with my tension um, so knitting has helped me kind of figure out how to be looser tight um, and so we're just gonna do that again I'm gonna go slow so we go through this, take this yarn all the way around to make a loop on our needle. Um, and then you just pull right back through um, and you pick up the loop that you made. And so one thing you might notice what I do is when I go around my, uh, my yarn or I go around my, my needle, I go over and then I pull it back down toward me this for me is when I go to move this needle, it helps me make sure that I'm not going to slide it off this edge. Um, but it also helps when you pick up, I wonder if I can show you this way, maybe. So when you pick up your, your needle um, to pick up this loop, if I have it pulled back, it helps me make sure that it stays on as opposed to just um, when you go through and you just kind of like leave it up. For me, I have trouble picking up this yarn when I go back through my loop. So I just pull it down to the side of the needle to help me as I go. Um, and so something else I know that I hear a lot of people struggle with knitting is that this needle here, since they have to take their hand off, um, sometimes slips and falls, which happens um, a lot for me. Uh, if you ever notice me knitting in public, there'll be times where I make a terrified face and that's because I have pulled this needle out and all, all of my stitches are off. Um, once you're like further into a project, it's a little easier to save that, uh, but right now it'd be very stressful. But what I do is you'll notice that my thumb is really tight on the, the, the stitches that I have added. That to me helps hold this in place. Um, so I don't have to like just be leaving it loose because that's when things are um, potential to fall off. Um, it's easier on smaller projects to do this um, 
and a lot of the knitting that I do, um, so some knitting needles come on a cable or just like a string basically, and they're connected. So what that would look like, let me put this down, is for instance, say this is just like one long needle with a cable on it. I knit on, on cables a lot um, only because it keeps everything all together and I don't have to worry about like dropping a needle when I'm on public transit because I, I very much enjoy knitting um, on transit just because it makes it go by faster um, and I'm spending so much time there anyway it just helps out so I'm just gonna finish this row um, one thing that helped me I've slowly started to master knitting while I walk um, so I did marching band in high school and a lot of that is doing several things at once while you walk um, so I was in color guard and I did flags, so that's basically people who like spin flags on a football field and run around and do all these things. Um, and so that for me really uh, is something that I'm working on with knitting, just so I'm able to get projects finished. It, it took a long time and I don't recommend it on hard projects. <laughs> um, I think I'm most successful at it when I do it when things I just have to knit and I don't have to like purl or try to make weird loops or things like that. So it would just be... Um, knitting straight um, and like I said those are the projects that I would knit on cables I would never do it with two needles because I would drop them and it would be a terrible terrible mess um, and so now we're at our final stitch flag knit I, I think I would need to grow some more arms to do that um, but if I could grow more arms that could mean I could knit and do everything else at the same time okay so we have just knit our first row like I said, I didn't pull my tension tight when I was doing my, my stitches to cast on, but that's okay. It's not a big deal. But you can see now our tail is over here <laughs> and uh, our yarn is here. So we just knit all of this from this needle to here. And so what we're just going to do is put this needle on this side and do the same thing over again. And so we're just going to do that. Uh, so that was one. So we're just going to do that for two and three. I'm just going to go through that then we get to talk about how to switch colors um, and then if you see me taking stitches or um, moving my hands I have a little paper that I'm keeping count on uh, because with this pattern um, you want to change colors at certain points so that way um, on the candy corn that you can't see the joins um, and so what that is is when you change colors I should have had a candy corn already knit flat. Um, it shows the color um, loop changes on a certain side. And so uh, by casting on on the same side of the pattern each time helps when we, um, when we um, seam it all up at the very end. Um, and I'll show you what we mean in just a second. But yeah. So that was two. I'm just going to mark that so I know. Yeah. I'm just going to do the same thing again. Um, there are other things that you could do, and I've been trying to um, further hack this pattern to make, like, larger ones. Um, I'm making a uh, Halloween care package for a friend. Um, her and I both really enjoy Halloween and are both very sad that uh, this Halloween is different due to quarantine, and so I am making a ton of different candy corns to just throw in her package uh, to be fun, uh, and then she can do whatever she wants with them. Um, I personally am going to make a candy corn garland for my uh, for my room, just because I really think they're super cute and small, um, and just really adorable. Uh, the pattern that I linked to and the pattern that I ad adapted this from uh, that designer has a lot of really cute tiny patterns. Um, she makes a lot of like small little leprechauns or um, Santa Clauses um, or things like that. I would love to figure out how to hack the, the rest of those. Yeah, you could put um, faces on them. The, um, the original pattern does. Um, and when I tried to do it, I was not as good. I am uh, solely learning embroidery when it comes to knitting. But that's where you could use this tapestry or um, the d the d darning needle, whatever you want to call it. And you could sew on little eyes to it. Um, I tried to do it and they looked a little scary because I just didn't do it well. 
Um, but it could be done, and I think that would be very cute to add. Um, okay, so we just finished all three rows that are going to be in the yellow for the bottom. Um, and so you can kind of count them. Let me see if... I don't know if this will focus really well. Um, but, so we have our bottom row. You can count them in the loops here. Doesn't quite show it, I apologize. But it goes one row, and then you have in between these here, it's not focusing well, I'm sorry, is two, and then the row we just made makes three. Um, one way that uh, knitters talk about it is they talk about rainbows and, um, and umbrellas, which I'm not quite sure how the umbrella part works. Um, but it's basically the ups of your loops and then the downs of your loops is how you count them. Uh, but now we're going to join a new color. This one is another one that like as I was reading books it didn't make sense. Um, and people, as I always read patterns, it would just say like, change colors. I'm like, I don't, I don't understand what you're talking about. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to move this yellow ball over. We're going to take our orange. We're just going to pull a little bit off. And so our first step is going to be putting it through our first loop that we have. Right here. And you're just going to make a U with your yarn. So you're not going to do anything special. You're not going to make a knot. You're just going to make a long U. Um, I do long because you're going to use the edges to seam it in uh, or to like weave into your project. Um, but you just do that and you're just going to hold it like this. So you have both of your tails. So you have your one attached to the ball of the yarn and your tail and you have a little hook kind of. Oh, and so this is going to be I'm just going to show you and then we'll do the actual pattern. So all you have to do is put your needle through the first loop. Take that loop you just made. Let's straighten it out. Put that on top. And so instead of throwing this yellow, you're going to use your orange. So you have that loop. And what I would suggest is getting that tail and holding it with your other. This is, this is where it got fiddly and hard when I first started but you're just gonna hold that so it makes that loop for you. So um, similar to, to when we would throw our, our yellow yarn, we have a very similar loop with our orange. And all you have to do is pull it through the other side and slip it off and you have just picked up a color. So you've added your different color that you needed. So I'm gonna do it again, make sure we pick this back up. Up. Um, but the pattern calls us to knit two together. Um, it took me a long time to, to, um, to learn how to do that. I watched a lot of YouTube videos and still there are times where I have to redo the YouTube videos because my brain doesn't understand it. Um, but for this part of our pattern we're going to knit two to get together. So on the pattern it's K the number two T-O-G so knit two stitches to together. So instead of going through one loop, we're just going to go through two. Um, and so this is a little difficult sometimes depending on your tension, um, but I usually try to do it one at a time. So we're going to go through one loop and then we're going to go through our second loop, as you can see here. And you're just going to do it very similar to our knit stitch, um, but you just go through two stitches instead of one. And so the reason we're doing this on this pattern is so it, it creates a triangle. Um, since we are making candy corns, they do go in a little pyramid shape. And so we want to lose some stitches um, as we go. So we've gone through our two and we're going to pick up the orange again. So we're going to do our loop, leave our tail. So we're going to slide it on. We're going to hold all three together. So we have our orange, our yellow, in our new orange and we're just gonna slip it back like we just picked up a regular knit stitch we're gonna slide that off and usually this is when it feels like a lot a lot of looseness and there's some weird tension so what you can do with that is you'll pull your yellow a little bit tighter and you'll pull that orange tail tighter as well and so this creates 
a very nice snug aspect. I'm not sure if that's showing well. And you'll notice now you have three strands of yarn. This is when you're gonna cut that yellow. Um, that can be scary. Um, I would suggest doing it a little long, like this one here. Um, largely so that if you do have to pull back or rip it, you have a little extra to work with. You can also just leave it on for your whole project until you're done. Um, but just for the sake of having some clear space, I'm just going to cut it. So then that can move out of our way. So now we have our two strands, our two tails. Um, so we have orange and yellow. And we're just going to leave them there. Pick up our orange. So we knit two together. Now we're going to knit three regular stitches. So we have one, two, three. Okay. And this time we're going to knit two to get two together twice. Um, so we're gonna do that again. We go to the to two loops. We're just gonna go through the both of them. And this is for me, it gets a little tight. On uh, For keeping the tails out of the way, on larger projects, I'll tie them in like a small little loop. Um, so let me do this stitch here and I'll show you. Okay, so that was one. So on larger projects, I'll just tie these in a little like slip knot, very similar to what we do. Um, just to keep them out of the way. I also sometimes will just tie them in a bow, um, largely so I can't pick them back up. Um, but just like a very loose type of bow, so that way you can also get it out when you don't need it. Um, but this is a little fiddly because of how small it is. But yeah, just tie them in a little bow. If they're out of the way, you won't pick them up. Um, or you can tie them in a little, um, just a, a loose knot, because we are going to um, use these when we're finished. Okay, now we're gonna knit two together again. So I'm just gonna, feels a little tight. Um, so I'm using acrylic yarn, and so what that means is it's made with some plastic. Um, so it does get a little tight. There are other types of yarn with wool or cotton, bamboo, alpaca, um, that are a little bit easier to do that. Um, so if you are using some acrylic I would be careful because it can snap if you pull it too tightly um, but but that's very similar with like wool or any any anything else um, the more you work with a specific yarn you'll um, begin to figure out like what pulls and tears more easily okay at the next part we're gonna knit three regular loops so that's one two three and then we're at our very end and we're gonna knit two together again. And so this is where I, I sometimes will um, sling my loops, they'll just like fall off of my needle um, just because I'm being careless or not paying as much of attention as I should. Um, so just be aware. And so this sometimes will be where I have problems when I have to slip it back over. And so I'm just gonna space it out. So now we should have is that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten? And then what I was talking about with the joins, and so on this side you can see it just goes orange and then there's nothing on those loops. But on this side you can see we have joined a stitch. Um, and so paying attention to when we add more um, color and making sure that it gets added at the right point, it keeps it so that way it's not showing different colors between each of them. So it'll just be like one nice seamless color. And so we're gonna do this for rows five through eight. So I'm gonna just knit those on up. Okay. Um, so what I really like about knitting as I have gotten uh, more into the community um, is that it's actually really, it can be, I'll, I'll, paraf I'll uh, phrase that, it can be a really great community. Um, more recently, within the past couple of years, there has been more outcry for inclusivity when it comes to sizes um, for patterns, as well as um, designers that get showcased, um, as well as accessibility of patterns, uh, whether it be cost um, and things like that. Um, so there are some really great people on 
um, Instagram that you can follow uh, that have some things. Um, my favorite designer who I'm knitting several of their patterns right now is Jessie Made um, Knits. She has some really cute um, sweaters and she makes some really cute bralettes and all of her stuff is size inclusive which is really great uh, because you get a lot of patterns uh, where the bust size doesn't go above like 50 and so people who have a higher bust size don't get to um, don't get to knit those patterns or they have to figure out and hack them themselves on figuring out like what will fit and how to uh, make it so it is that way um, but it's also really great is she offers uh, pricing um, scales as well so if you um, cannot afford her full price pattern she can offer it at lower prices for you which is really great and helps uh, helps it have a different barrier of entry for the um, the cost of it because knitting is a, is and can be a very expensive um, hobby there are yarn there are um, skeins of yarn that can cost I've seen the most expensive one uh, that kind of just like made my jaw drop but it's understandable is like $45 I'm just gonna tally so we just did five um, because they, they are done through independent dyers and um, there's a lot of labor that goes into that um, oh wait that was five and six okay Um, so yeah, it, it can be a lot of fun in a really cool community. Yeah, yeah, she has some really good ones. Um, I have some yarn. Uh, she has one that uses mohair, and I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. But it's this really nice, like, frilly type yarn that's, like, super thin-weighted um, uh, that I am going to attempt to make. Uh, but yeah, making modifications to patterns is really stressful. Um, I haven't made a lot of clothing items because of that. I just don't. Um, it took me a while to understand how patterns were made and done. Um, uh, largely because a lot of like sewing or a lot of um, knitting patterns are either knit bottom up. So you start at the, the, the bottom of the sweater and knit all the way to the top. Or they have some that you knit it flat, kind of like what we're doing now, and then you sew up the sides. Um, and I just know how I am, and I feel like I would just stop knitting it up and sewing it up after I got to a certain point. Because I just wouldn't, I would just be kind of over it. Um, and then there are patterns that you don't, you knit the, the, the body of the sweater first, and then you add the sleeves. And I did not understand how to add the sleeves, and like, I, I don't... Um, I still slightly don't quite understand how you add sleeves to things, um, but uh, Jessie Maid, who I talked about, uh, she has some really great uh, reels on her Instagram that show how to do certain p parts of her pattern, which I really appreciate, because otherwise I'd have no idea what I was doing. Um, I think that was seven, so we have one more to go, yes. Yeah, that's her Instagram. Um, she's also very responsive. Um, I'm working on a pattern of hers currently, and I, um, I didn't quite understand one of the parts of it, um, and so I just I sent her an email. She responded, um, I think within a few days, which is understandable. Um, she is not a full time designer. She has a, a life outside of that, but was still very responsive and kind, uh, which is greatly appreciated as someone who is somewhat newer to making clothing items. Right, coming to the end of row eight, I believe. I think that's correct. So now we're going to switch colors again to white. And we're gonna find out if I counted correctly. And if not, we'll just have to rip it back and do it again. So we're going to, and on this part, we're gonna knit two together again. So we're just gonna go through two of our loops like before, pick up our little U shape, put it on over, swipe it through. I think I did do this right, perfect. Pull them tight, and I'm gonna go ahead and clip my orange. Can you do it anywhere? Um, so with this one, they have you decrease on the outside as well as in the middle. 
um, that is because it will be more of a triangle shape and if you decrease only on one side it'll be like a, a, a right angle triangle and when you go to fold it, it it does not look well I tried to rehack the pattern to where that was the only place that you had to de decrease and it, it made a very adorable but very incorrect right shaped triangle um, but if you decrease um, in a way that it uh, follows the shape, it will help it be more symmet symmetrical um, whenever we're finished. So we're just going to knit two together all the way across. So we have five stitches when we're done. And so uh, what you saw me just do there was um, adjust my tension. And so as you pick up two stitches, you can kind of see that it leans a little bit shown it very well but it's the two stitches here and they lean um, so I'll just tug a little bit um, to make sure that it's not got a gap or anything um, so I'll show you a little bit more closely so we're gonna go through our two stitches here just to show you on this side so we throw our white pull it through and you can see when I pull this off with the two stitches there's a little bump there in the loop because one is the farthest stitch and one is the close stitch. So this is when I'll just tug a little bit to kind of adjust it. So that way they're all pulled at the same um, size and it helps get not have those like weird humps over here. Um, but they don't quite matter because those are gonna be on the inside of our candy corn. So if you don't uh, do that, that's okay. So we're now at our final one. So we're going to do our last here, do our loop. Ooh, yep, so that's why I grab and hold it back down because I sometimes drop that piece of yarn. Okay, how do I have the pattern written? I'm wondering. Okay, so that was row nine, and so I'm just going to um, knit two together, knit one, knit two. I think I did this. Um, this is a part of the pattern that I have also hacked just so it's a little bit taller at the top um, So it has more white and it's a little more balanced like um, candy corn is um, So you knit two together Pull it a little tight so it looks okay knit one And then knit two together because you look at that mochi mochi land pattern she has you do the whole round and then you um, weave your tail in and pull it tight and tie a knot so the white is a little bit shorter um, so if that's what you prefer you can totally do that um, but this is just the aesthetic that I that I preferred it on okay and so now we're going to cast off stitches and so when we're knitting to cast off what you typically do is you will do a knit stitch so we're just gonna knit like regular okay and we're gonna knit the second stitch okay and so now and this is why I use a crochet hook um, but I, I'll show you the without the crochet hook and then I'll show you with you're gonna take this first loop and pick it up and then you have to put this stitch over the needle so what that will do is you uh, basically like leapfrog this second stitch that you did with this yarn and so this stitch will no longer be on our needle and this one will be the only one on our needle so and I use a crochet hook because sometimes I will drop this um, and it gets really frustrating. So you, and this will get a little hard to see, so I apologize, but you basically, basically, I shouldn't say it like that, um, but you pull that through and then a little scary is you'll just slide it off your needle. And so you can see here, we now have that loop on this hook that we have so we have two stitches and I'm going to show you now how I do it with the crochet hook so I'm going to replace this needle with a crochet hook so I'm just going to feed it through that exact same loop that I have okay 
So it's very similar to this one. So I'm going to go through just like I would with a knitting needle. Pull this through just like with the knitting needle. Okay, so now we have two on this side. But why I like the crochet hook is I don't have to use this needle to pull this one over the top because I can use the crochet hook. I'm going to put this down. So we're just going to use this. And so this is when I will turn my crochet hook and pull it right through that loop. And so what that allowed us to do was the same stitch, but then I just get to keep this on. So the crochet hook has a little lip there, like an actual hook, like a fish hook, and it holds this in place. And so this now, what we'll do, is we have this loop, you're gonna wanna cut the long tail, not part of the loop. So I'm gonna cut this right here and then you just pull it through. And so now you have a finished off um, piece of candy corn. And you can see it looks kind of like odd shaped. And so this is where all of our cast on sides and all of our tails, I'm gonna untie this one, come in handy. Um, so in the original pattern, she knits it in a circle. And so it's already made in a, in a 3D shape. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't suggest eating this because it is acrylic. Um, and I don't know how well this plastic would be dig digestible, um, but it is as fun as uh, regular candy corn if you do enjoy it. Um, and so this for me, and since I knitted, since I knit it flat, which means I knit all one piece here, is we're just gonna fold it in half and we're going to use all these tails to help seam it, but also to kind of give it a fluff, like give it a nice fluffy 3D feel. And that is where our um, tapestry needle or darning needle or whatever you want to call it comes in handy. Um, so I like to start, and you can do this however you want, with this um, initial long tail. And you'll know it's the initial one because all of your joins, let me move this yarn, all of your joins are on this side and your tail is over here. Because I use this one to stitch up the bottom. So I fold it in half, I will thread this needle. Another benefit of using a tapestry needle is these eyelets are much larger than like a sewing needle. Um, and it makes it easier to thread yarn. Yeah, it is kind of like um, printing like for 3D structures. Uh, and then you just piece it together. Um, so you just thread your needle. And this is where you can kind of just sew it however you want. There is no perfect way. I mean, I'm sure there's a perfect way, but I, I don't have a preference. And you just go back and forth and sew it up. So I'm just, I go through a couple stitches and you just pull it through. And then you can either go over it like a, like an over the top seam. So I'll show you what that would look like. And you pull it up and this will go on top there to seam it. This doesn't. Or you can go in between them, so you can go like a like a like with a shoelace, and go under on the inside, and that'll create like a shoelace look to it. And you can go back over. Um, I typically do the up and overs, so when you just go this way through it, um, because I like the I like the the seam that it can create but you can look at all my previous ones and I typically just change how I seam it each time. It just depends on what I'm doing at the, at the moment. Um, one of them has like a smoother finish. So this is one of the ends that I did where I looped over the top and it looks more like a flat single seam. Um, but the ones where you do like in between, it's more of like a, of a U shape. Um, so it really just depends on what you're interested in and how you want it to look. This one has more of a flat base, whereas this one is more rounded. Um, so if you're looking for it to like stand up on something or to like post it up, the the one where you seem kind of like shoelaces um, would be helpful. Um, but really it's just a, a preference of aesthetic whenever you're doing it. Um, and then so for instance, what I like about these really long tails 
Um, so in that original pattern, she fills them with some like fluff, kind of like what you'd see in pillows. Um, so since I don't do that, what I will do is I will send my needle just like in the middle of this. So we still have this little pouch, right? And I will just put the needle in the corner where I'm at, pull it through, and we'll, um, we'll do this for all of them. And then I just take it off my needle. And so this is the, the yarn we were just stitching. You can see it pull there a little bit. Um, I just tuck it in. So this will just go inside this lovely little candy corn um, and be out of the way. And so what we'll then do is we'll use each color accordingly. So we'll use the rest of this yellow tail um, where we finished this yellow to do the rest. Yeah, I'm, um, like I said, I, I took a lot of this with me on public transit and I try to not have as many bags. I lived in Boston for a long time and I carried a lot of bags um, and I don't like carrying a lot of bags if I don't have to just because of it's hard to carry. Um, and so the least amount of supplies, although fluff isn't that large, um, is better, but also I don't have to think about getting fluff. And then another thing is fluff usually comes in like really large bags. Um, so if you don't have a use for it, or if you are, um, if you only need it for a single project, it's really hard to find everything you would need. Um, so again, I'm just tucking in that yellow, and then we'll pick up with this orange here, seam it through, and usually, so since I don't tie these off, I'll have this um, little bitty tail, and so what I will make sure I do when I sew the up to the other color, so I'll make sure that's tucked in really well. And so this orange is technically on the inside of our fold. I'll make sure to go over to the outside first, just so I can take that folded piece and ha kind of ha have it in control now. I've just stitched over um, that piece and then we're gonna go back through over and over again. That way it keeps, so you can see here there's a little bit of it still out um, but for me these aren't I'm not trying to make perfect little candy canes or candy corns you can kind of do them however you want um, when it comes to seaming them up so I do a little bit and then I'll do one more and so with this one I do I tuck it in very similar to how I did that first yellow and if it comes out the other side which is totally fine the good thing with this needle since it's not sharp is I just tuck it right back in. So we just shove it all back in there. And it can take, you can do this at the very end. You can do this at the very beginning. That's another joke that uh, crafters who do like knit and crochet is uh, weaving in your ends. They always joke that like a great, um, if we could have a genie, we would use that genie to weave in all of our ends because it takes a lot of time. Uh, but I try to do them all as I go to save time, but it doesn't always happen. Okay, it's good enough for now. So we're going to use that orange one again. Yeah, I finished a shawl earlier in the pandemic, um, which is my first like major huge project that I did. And it started out at like 14 cast on stitches. And then it got to a point where you like picked up like 400 stitches. And so at the end of it, there were so many, um, so many ends I had to weave, uh, but it was worth it because it was my first like really huge project. So we're just gonna, with this one, we can probably tuck it in. So I'm gonna go through this loop here just so it's folded over. All right. Now we are at four o'clock. I'm just gonna stay on here and finish this if that's okay. I don't know if anything is scheduled um, for the next part, but I, you can also cut this. So if you don't wanna have to tuck it in the way I did, you can just cut it off. And then the benefit of these is you can just kind of pull it and it just hides back inside. So you don't even know it was there. And then we're gonna do the white. So we'll do a little bit of this. You can also trim them before you start to weave them in. It's really up to you. Um, pattern has no rules apart from when you um, want to cast or when you want to um, decrease your stitches you can really just kind of have fun with it that's what I like about 
a lot of crafting is you can kind of just have fun. Yeah. So since most of this is seamed up and ready to go, I'm gonna pull that through. And just tuck this down inside. I'm just gonna take that, pull it through. Okay. And so you can trim it and then you just gotta pull it a little bit figure out the shape you want. You can leave the string on it and hang them up by that or you can tuck it in. So you can see it's not a perfect shape. That's where seaming in can be different. Um, but all mine are, are very irregular and different. Um, but they're really nice because, you know, I don't, I've never seen a perfectly made candy corn. So that's my time today. Thanks, y'all. This was a lot of fun. I hope I didn't go too fast and if I did, I'm sorry. Um, I'm happy to help out in future times if you have more questions. All right. They do. They look very cute. I'm excited to throw these in her package just as like loose things. Um, it'll be a lot of fun. Thanks, y'all.